So, I might have waited too long to fill my empties. Um, I ended up having a bad end of September. And I mean, I should have filmed my September empties earlier than that, but I just kind of put it off and then I didn't really get a chance to film them. So I decided to combine August and September's empties, but uh, now I've got a lot of crap. <laughs> so uh, get comfortable because my September ones aren't even organized because I put them in just threw them in a bag thinking that I would just, you know, got, get to them when I get to them. So, I'm going to do, I'm moving a couple of things around, what I believe is just August 1st. And then I will try to pull from September as organized as I possibly can. We're just gonna have to, that one's gonna be a little bit of a crapshoot though, <laughs> so. Here's August. Let's see how this goes. Normally, I do makeup first, and for August, I will totally do that. I have the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation. I really love this stuff. I would definitely repurchase. My shade is 00A Porcelain, and that does actually work really well for me. I'm sorry I'm looking down. There's something on my bag, and I'm wiping it off. And since that fell out, I guess I'll use it and go over it next. This is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Amplify Primer. Honestly, I don't think this did anything. Maybe it's because with this particular style of brush, I don't think I can get it on my eyebrow, not my eyebrows, my eyelashes as well as I would like. So maybe I just didn't get to experience it till it's full effect, but I would not seek that out again. Here's the Bare Minerals Dew Mist Setting Spray. I use this to kind of help melt my powder before going over it with a mattifying mist. It worked well for that, but I wouldn't purchase something on the expensive side for that. Um, you are in the wrong month. <laughs> Here is something that I actually wound up using up in a lotion, like at least half of it. It is the Fursali Jelly Beam Illuminator in Glow Up. It was that original jelly highlighter. I got it in a boxy charm. Uh, the highlighter itself, I couldn't actually wear too much because it was a little too dark for me. I would mix it in with foundations and stuff like that, but I would. I don't even think. I don't even know if they make that anymore. But I would not seek it out again because I didn't really like it. I finally finished the side of this that I was working on. This is a Bite Lip Duo from a few years ago. It is it. The shade I worked on is in the shade Jam. It took me forever to finish this. And the sad part is, I still have all of this side. It is opal. And it just like gives a bit of dimension to a different lipstick, but I think I'm just gonna use it up as a lip balm so I can get rid of it. I love the color. And I do like Bite's formula, and I know that they changed it again so that they could be a vegan product, which is awesome, but I feel like they just, I feel like between the first and second formulas, they didn't actually change all that much. I have the CoverGirl So Lashy Blast Pro Mascara. I don't know if they still make this, and I thought this wand looked ridiculous, but this little ball on the end was actually nice for getting like the lower lashes and stuff like that, so. And I ended up liking it. I, for the most part, I do like CoverGirl mascaras. They are some of my favorites, honestly. The, I haven't bought it in ages because I have such a back stock that I don't like to buy mascaras too often, but uh. It's the one where you're supposed to like twirl or something like that. It has like the flat brush. I really like the Super Sizer. I really like that formula. And I think they still make that. Uh, here's a lip balm that my dog tried to eat. It is the Revlon Kiss Balm. Mine, the one I had was in the shade Sugar Plum, which I think was like a holiday one. As you can see, my dog Beals, she's the bigger, chunkier Chihuahua. 
Uh, she tried to eat it. She eats lip balms when she can get to them. I had literally made a joke in a video about my dog eating lip balms and like less than a week later she did this, so. It was a nice lip balm while it lasted. <laughs> I have an eyeliner from Jula. This was when pencil met gel in ultraviolet. Very pretty purple color. I actually would repurchase this. I know you can only buy it from like their website now, which is kind of annoying, but they do seem to run sales a lot, so. And it's only like $12, which maybe that just is the state of affairs of drugstore price product prices, but that's honestly not bad for a fairly unique purple color. And before I hit samples, uh, I have some Clean & Clear oil absorbing sheets. They're nice. Um, Clean & Clear is not cruelty free, so I will not be repurchasing. I'm going through what I think is my last stack right now. But uh, e.l.f. makes oil absorbing sheets that are really nice. So they're not, the si they're not like plasticky, they're more papery, but they still work really well. So pick them. Here is a replica, replica Jazz Club perfume. I actually really like this as a room spray. I have the candle of this and it's too strong though. So I thought I could get around buying, at the time, a perfume that I only liked as a room spray by buying the candle and it, it worked out horribly. But I still really like the scent of that. And for some makeup samples, I have two of the Cover FX Power Play Concealers. I actually bought the full size of this when Sephora was cleaning out their Cover FX products. In One Light is my shade. I did use two shades to try and like contour and bronze with and it actually didn't work out very well. <laughs> like, they were a little too pigmented for that, but for like concealing under my eyes, this is great. I love it. Let's see, I have... RMS Beauty's Uncover Up Cream Foundation. That's what this is. I remember the shade selection not being that great, so I would probably not purchase, plus it's like $50. But uh, it actually did look really good. So this 00 shade was a little dark for me. They do have one lighter. Maybe they did have a decent shade, which I can't remember anymore. I thought that it wasn't good, but maybe I'm remembering something else. And finally, I have, for makeup samples, I have a, a lot more. We have this Mary Kay little set that I had hanging around forever. Uh, the shadows weren't anything to write home about. The blush was a little patchy. The lipstick, the True Dimensions lipstick, was actually really pretty, so. And now, getting into this stuff, I have some Kirkland Facial Wipes. I have one pack of these left. I thought this was my last one, but it's not. Um, if you like makeup wipes, these are really good and they are cruelty free. I'm just, this is the thing that I'm trying to get away from because I pref they're a little too disposable for me. Enough, enough of the stuff that I like is disposable that I figure makeup wipes are something that I can cut out because I like micellar water and it does just as good. But if you like makeup wipes, Kirkland, they're from Costco, but you can get them on like Amazon and stuff too, are really cheap, but they still feel really nice. Alright, I have a shampoo and conditioner in here. This is the Hair Food Manuka Honey and Apricot Shampoo and Conditioner. I had really liked these. I wish I could repurchase, but alas, they're owned by Clairol, not cruelty free. I have the Garnier Whole Blends Green Tea, Green Apple and Green Tea uh, Detangler. Really liked this. Smelled great, not cruelty free. Can't rebuy it. Nivea Shea Daily Moisture moisturizer. Wish I could rebuy this. Works great. Not cruelty free. You're going to hear me say that a lot. I'm trying to go kind of fast here because I have so much stuff. Uh, the Zany Laney So Fluffy Body Scrub. Notes are apple, hazelnuts, and rainbows. I wish I could repurchase this because it was cruelty free, but uh, they had to go out of business this year. Smelled great. Wish I could get it again. I loved their scrub formula especially. Oh, here's a makeup product that fell out. This was the Pretty Vulgar, the Powder Room Matte About It Translucent Setting Powder. This took me like six months to use up. It lasted forever. I initially had really liked it, but I don't know if just the foundations I was using it up with didn't work as well with it, but sometimes it could get cakey, which maybe I was just applying too much setting powder. I don't know. 
So it was a little on the finicky side, so I would not seek it out again. The packaging is really cute though, like nice, got that cute little vintage feel to it. Um, here we have the Dry Bar, the Chaser Shine Cream. There's other stuff that I like better as far as like a cream product to put in my hair, like a leave-in type product. This was nice though, so if you're interested in it, I would recommend trying it out, but it, I have stuff I like better. Here is the Kate Somerville Biomimicking Peptides Serum. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't see any like amazing results to warrant a hundred dollar price tag 98 i think technically but <sighs> so i would not seek this out i got a few boxy charm it was great to try but just didn't do anything for me here's the igk beach club volumizing texture spray somebody asked me recently how i use these um i kind of use them the same way as dry shampoo but for a more immediate result like if my hair is getting kind of flat I will spray it in my roots. Dry shampoo though I tend to use on an overnight basis this is more of an immediate effect so and that doesn't really absorb my oils in my hair so I kind of use them the same way but they perform different things for me. Here is the Juice Beauty Stem Cellular Anti-Wrinkle Moisturizer. I used it all up even though you're supposed to like pump this, but I hate that thing. So I just opened it up and used it that way. I really like this moisturizer. I really do. It is 70 freaking dollars. When I bought this one, uh, it was at the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty and it was half off. They have listed it on one Ulta sale since then. I didn't buy it then because I still had this one, but if it popped up again, I would purchase it again. I just, I have a really hard time spending $70 on a freaking moisturizer. Now that lasts me like five to six months, so. Oh, here's another Zany Laney product. This is The Pit. I believe this is a Parks and Rec based scent. It is cranberries, lemon, and vanilla. I did really like that. I'm so glad I finished this. It is the Evolu Super Oil. Now, this never did anything bad to my skin, and I got it in an Ipsy Glam Bag Plus, so I used it up, but it had a scent to it. Like, it has always smelled like that. Everybody complained that there smelled like this, so it is just what the product smells like, but it smells sour. I don't get it. And it didn't do anything particularly great for my skin. It helped it hydrate it a little bit more, but I don't remember it doing anything particularly amazing after that. So, no, would not seek that out. We have a Kiehl's Calendula Serum Infused Water Cream. I did like it, but Kiehl's isn't cruelty free. I have two of these, the Sunday Riley CEO 15% Vitamin C Brightening Serum. I don't like the texture of these. Like they're a little bit oily to me. If I'm gonna go higher end vitamin C serum, I'm gonna go Ulla Hendrickson, so. Would not purchase these again. Or, I guess, would not purchase these, but if I got like this in an Ipsy bag or it came as part of a sample pack, I would use it that way, but I wouldn't seek it out. Here we have the Sunday Riley UFO Ultra Clarifying Acne Treatment Facial Oil. I did really like this. Now, right now I have a full size of the retinol oil of theirs. So I'm very well stocked on face oils right now. This, I bought this as a bonus for an Ipsy bag one month, but I really liked it and I would recommend it if you want to buy yourself an expensive facial oil. Let's see. We have the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Gel Lotion. I like gel moisturizers, so I liked this fine. I'm a little afraid to use a full size because their confidence in a cream broke me out. But this mini didn't, so. I don't know if it's slightly different ingredients or what. Here we have the First Aid Beauty Pharma Arnica Relief and Rescue Mask. It was nice, but I didn't see any like major results, so I would not purchase a full size. And finally, before I get into 
sheet masks and skincare samples. I have the Ulta Ultimate Clean Foaming Face Wash. Uh, I would purchase this, but you can't find it, so I guess I can't. I think they discontinued it. Sheet masks and a pack of eye masks even. I guess I'll do that first. There's like a pack of, I have hair everywhere. I shed constantly. Anyways, these are a from Black, B-L-A-Q. They are an eye mask with hyaluronic acid. Like five of these are in here. Yep, five. They are these like little eye gels that sit under your eyes. I, they, these were fine. They were not as slippery as some can be, but my favorite is always going to be the Wander Beauty gold ones that don't move even if I'm standing on my freaking head. Uh, I actually bought a pack of them recently, so I would not buy these, but I would not be mad if they came back into my life. This came to me, to me through FabFitFun, so they were fine. Sheet masks. We have a Coscody Sparkling Wine Sheet Mask. I love these. Fortunately, they're not cruelty-free. A Only Jeju Green Tea Intensive Whitening Sheet Mask. This was fine. A LA Fresh Brighten the World sheet mask was also pretty nice. I like the packaging on this one, which for something like a sheet mask is kind of dumb to focus on, but Marilyn Monroe is always iconic. We have a St. Ives Glowing Apricot sheet mask. That was fine, but St. Ives isn't cruelty free, so I would not repurchase. We have a Feel Brilliant Bamboo Charcoal Facial Sheet Mask. These are nice for when I'm broken out, so I did actually really like that. A Tula Skincare Probiotic Superfood Star Bright Nourishing and Brightening Cosmic Hydrogel Mask. These are this is one of those like two-piece thick gel solid sheet masks, and I like it, but Tula's expensive. We have an Oka Pump the Brightening Up sheet mask. These are pretty nice. A mid flower hyaluronic acid moisturizing mask. I got this in an Ipsy bag. Those were pretty good. And a MetaHeal RNA whitening sheet mask. This was also pretty good. All right. So down to skincare samples. Actually, this is actually a pack of 10 samples right here. So I just threw them in here. It is the It Cosmetics Secret Sauce, which is a Gross name, if you were dirty minded like I am. Clinically Advanced and Miraculous Anti-Aging Moisturizer. These were fine. As far as a moisturizer is concerned, they are a little heavy and a little greasy for me. I have very oily skin. So not something I would personally seek out again. I have two of these. They are the Sephora clay mask. I have a gray and a pink one. They were fine. This one I'm actually interested in purchasing one day when I don't have as many damn facial oils. The Skin & Co Truffle Therapy Facial Oil. Not only did this smell really good, but it did add some extra like good nourishing hydration to my face without making me feel extra gross. Because I do have to be careful with facial oils. I tend to mostly mix them in with my moisturizer or sometimes I put them on top of my moisturizer. It just depends on how I'm feeling that night. But uh, some of them can leave me greasy for hours. I want one that is going to settle into my skin in a halfway reasonable amount of time. Here's a real simple, sensitive and gentle facial cleansing towel towelette with aloe vera. Didn't really care for that. It was really dry. It may have just dried out, but I didn't like it. And finally, for August, we have the Drunk Elephant A Passione Retinol Cream and B Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum. I don't remember being terribly impressed with either one of these. The serum was nice, but Drunk Elephant, hella expensive. And I don't think I had enough of the retinol cream. I was able to use it for a few days though to really get an impression. Retinol is something you have to use over time. So, <sighs> all right. So now, and now into the jumbled mess that is my September empties. These are not separated. So we're just gonna be pulling out the bag. 
This is actually the month that I dyed my hair because I was feeling depressed and I figured why not dye my hair? It might perk me up. This is the Urban Essence Shower Caps. I bought these from the Dollar Tree. They are a 12 pack and I would just put them over my head when I was coloring my hair. Unfortunately, they, they rip really easily. So I would not repurchase these. I would probably just buy some from Sally's Beauty next time. We have the Jason Dandruff Relief Shampoo. This is like the second or third bottle of this I've gone through. It's a great cruelty-free dandruff shampoo. If you are in need of something like that, I was a head and shoulders gal for years, but I needed to find something that actually like worked. And this does, it really does. My only, to say it's a con is a little too strong of a word, but uh, the reason why I tend to go through this a little faster than I did my head and shoulders was because you have to use a little bit more because it has no parabens or sulfates or something like that. Some, I think it's the sulfates. It doesn't lather at all. <laughs> so I have to actually like part my hair and like massage it in, in the front. And then I have to flip my hair over and then do the same to the back. And I wind up using a little bit more shampoo that way, but I can buy this on Amazon, it's like eight bucks. I have prime shipping, it's at my house in two days, so I really don't mind going through it a little bit faster. It's not like obnoxiously fast or anything. It's like I use this out about every four months, whereas head and shoulders, I was going through it about every six months. So I can live with that. We have the Body Shop Tea Tree Toner, and I used to swear by this. I've used it many a bottle in the past. I found out recently that they have an MLM, and I know a lot of people are totally cool with multi-level marketing companies. I will not be buying from them again. I will be using up my products that I have, but it's really, I'm really sad because I happen to like a lot of their products. So that was my soapbox for the evening. Next, I have the Wella Color Tango Developer. This is the 20, it's worked fine. I'm probably just gonna buy Ion next time because I know that doesn't test on animals and I can get it at Sally's Beauty. I could swear I bought an Ion one somewhat recently, but maybe I'm just insane because I can't find it anywhere, but it might just be hidden somewhere in my bathroom and I've like thrown crap on top of it. So this worked, but I'm gonna buy Ion next time. Here is the Cos RX Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. I use this as like a boost of hydration step in my skincare. I have a lot of those. Despite being oily, uh, you can't deprive your skin of hydration. That'll just piss it off and make it more oily. And I like this as an essence because it's a little thicker. A lot of them are watery. I bought something different this time because I wanted to try something new, even though I've gone through multiple bottles of this and know that it works know that I love it but I was like I want to try something new I regret it the stuff I bought I bought it on off of Ulta's website where you can get this too although you can get it a little cheaper on Amazon so it just depends on where I'm buying from as to where I get this from but uh yeah the one I bought is too watery like it's not pure water I can feel it has some viscosity to it but it's not as thick as this is this is like a gel and I prefer it so I would I would purchase this again next time, but it's gonna be months before I need to. Here's the actual hair color that I used. It is the uh, Eroiro Premium Natural Semi-Permanent Hair Color in 40 Blue. It's really pretty. It is starting to fade a little bit in my roots, but you know, that's where the shampoo goes, so I'm not surprised it's fading a little bit. But it's not already obnoxiously faded after multiple washes so it is really nice it is cruelty free vegan and cruelty free even and surprisingly two of these actually covered all of my hair so that was awesome because I, I bought three thinking it was going to take three here is the buggy wipes i used these at my makeup desk but as soon as i use up the last one of these that i have i have one more that i'm using up right now I'm just going to keep my solar water at my desk too, just to cut back on a little bit of waste. Let's see. We have another body scrub from Danny Laney. This is Pick Me Up. This is tiramisu and coffee. Loved it. I did find out that Tree Hut has a coffee scented body scrub that's actually in like this oil and scrub formula. So 
I will try that out. I do like Tree Hut's uh, brand, not well, not brand, but formula. So, yeah. This is an Herbal Essence Foam Conditioner. I had really thought this would not work that well for me. I thought it wouldn't condition enough. It's actually really nice, but Herbal Essence, not cruelty free. I'm not repurchasing. I'm just going through my back stock. Here's something I would repurchase. It is the Kenzie Free Spirit Perfume. This is just a little purse spray. This has some free notes to it. Like I think Blackberry is one of them. I really liked it. And scent is such a hard thing to nail in like a subscription box that I was really surprised and I wound up liking it. They don't test on animals. They're, I mean, it's still like a perfume price, but it's not like an obnoxiously expensive perfume price. So I would pick that out for myself. I only actually have one perfume right now, which is kind of cool. Here is the Kate Somerville Cold Cream. I used this to remove my makeup. It worked all right, but I'll be honest, Pond's cold cream is a lot better than that and costs a lot cheaper. Pond's test on animals, so I can't buy that, but that's not a concern for you. Okay, I have another perfume. I finished two perfumes in a month. This is the Pacifica Tuscan Blood Orange. Really loved this, would totally repurchase. You can get this from Target and Amazon. So like somebody had actually asked me where to get that from. And that one I bought from Target, but they have it on Amazon as well. This is the Dewy Tree, the Clean Lab AC Dew Foam Cleanser. This is not foamy at all. It's very much like a gel cleanser, but it was fine. Got it through Ipsy, it was fine. Here is a I Do Care Matcha Mood Soothing Green Tea Wash Off Mask. I love matcha and green tea, so I liked the smell of it. This was not, this didn't do much for me. It took out my redness a little bit, I think, because that's kind of what I think it was supposed to do. But that could easily just be me looking for it to do something. So I have two more of these little minis in different types that I got as like a trio, so. Still experimenting. That one I would not seek out though. I have a MAC lip glass. This is in Nymphet. Uh, MAC actually makes some really nice lip glosses, but test on animals, can't repurchase. Do y'all know if you can back to MAC these little like minis that they sell? I have no idea. Here is a Hard Candy Starlit Glow Strawberry Face Serum. We got Marilyn Monroe again. And this stuff smells amazing. Like just the best strawberries and cream scent that I have come across in a product, a, like a face product or something like that. So if scent in your skincare does not bother you, caveat, uh, this is a nice little moisturizing serum. I used it up mixing it up with dry sheet masks, but you could totally just use it every day as like your base serum. And it's only like eight bucks, so I didn't really mind using it up, you know. I, I would not be adverse to purchasing again just to mix into masks or to use on my face as a regular serum. We have the Julep uh, Nail Polish and Lucky, this like super thick glitter. I actually really loved it, but I don't think they make that color anymore, which is unfortunate because I would totally purchase it if they did. Here we have the Malin and Go Goetz, Goats, whatever, Revitalizing Eye Gel. Normally I like my eye creams to be thicker, but especially like during the summer, during the day, this was great. If you like a lighter eye cream, that's a great one. Here's the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. Uh, if I used this under makeup, it gave me like a nice little glow that actually showed through my makeup without being really oily or anything. On top of my makeup, this, this was no bueno. This was not good. <laughs> this did not please me. It made me really oily. So for the, pr considering the price of this, I probably wouldn't purchase. But if I got it through another sample thing, like this came in an Ipsy bag. I actually chose this as my sample for an Ipsy bag. If it came that way, I'd be happy to use it up again, but I wouldn't purchase. Here's a primer I would purchase though. I have purchased it. It's the Siate London Watermelon Burst Hydrating Primer. Despite being a hydrating primer, 
It actually worked really well with my oily skin. It kept me moisturized without making me greasy and still like held on to my makeup. It does smell like watermelon. If you don't like that, you will not like this. If you're like me and you love that, this is great. I have a full size that I bought as an Ipsy add-on. It's honestly the only reason why I went and used up that mini like right away. Here we have the Tarte Maracuja Tinted Hydrator. Mine is in a shade that I cannot read. So this shade. <laughs> and I thought it was going to be too dark, but it's a very light coverage, so I was able to make it work. It was fine. I liked the light coverage, but I got kind of greasy with it, so I would not purchase it. But if you're a more dry skinned person who likes light coverage, I think you will like that. Here is an Hosk Argan Oil Repairing Shine Hair Oil. I just use this as a deep like hydrating oil treatment, so I used it all at once right after I had colored and bleached my hair to hell and back. And it's great for that. It's like $2.99, even if you use it all at once, it's only $2.99. But if you use it like as a lighter hair oil, like daily, this will still last you a while. This is the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Brightening Eye Perfector. And despite being in the shade of Fair, I think I got paler over time and this became too dark for me. Neutrogena is not cruelty free. I wouldn't repurchase it anyway. But this became a pain in the ass to use up and I finally wound up just breaking down and using it up as a uh, foundation for a few days to get it gone. Sadly, it looked really good as a foundation. <laughs> Here is the Lily Lashes Triple X Mascara. Got it in a boxy charm. It's fine, but Lily Lashes is kind of expensive for a mascara that was just fine. So, wouldn't seek that out. Here is the Wander Beauty Glow Ahead Illuminating Oil. This was really pretty. Like it was a, it was an iridescent pink oil. And it was nice to massage on my face as part of like my skincare. My only thing is I don't think it left me particularly illuminating. So I don't know if I would purchase this again. But I really liked it while I had it. So I don't know. Here's another lipstick. This is the Bite Beauty Lip Pencil in Pastille. Can I get it? there? I did really like that. I think this was the birthday present one year. It was either Pastille or the other one. I don't remember. I really like Bite Beauty's lip formula and I like these type of colors. So I would possibly purchase that again. Here is a Murad Multivitamin Infusion Oil. Didn't, didn't seem to be anything special. Here's an Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray in like a perfume sample form. I love this stuff. I have like two bottles of it over there that I bought on sale last year. So I definitely recommend it. Just wait for it to go on sale. It's kind of expensive full price, although I have bought it at full price. Not only did I finish a nail polish, I finished off a top coat. This is the Ciate London Geology Top Coat. But um... If you like a really shiny top coat and that's all you need, this is fine. If you need this to like dry fast or be chip resistant or anything else but be shiny, this doesn't do it for you. I finally broke down and bought the Sesh Feet and despite it smelling like an ass on fire, um, it's actually really good. <laughs> I do have to be like in a ventilated room because I can't stand the freaking smell of it, but it's really good. All right, I went, you guys win. I'll use the goddamn sesh feet that's gonna give me nose cancer or something. Here is the Bubble Tea Peach Ice Tea Body Cream. Smelled amazing. Um, this seems to be a British brand because the prices for it were in pounds, but I loved it. I would probably purchase a full size anyway. This is old packaging, I know it, but it still worked and it didn't break me out, so I don't care. It was the Ulla Hendrickson Sheer Transformation Moisturizer. This is a nice moisturizer, but I can get cheaper that does just as good. That's the problem. Like, it's nothing that blows me away like the Juice Beauty one, so I don't want to pay Ulla Hendrickson prices for it. 
There is stuff from Ulla Hendrickson I will pay their prices for. That's just not one of them. Uh, here is the Dewy Tree Miracle Pore Minimizing Serum. It was all right. I don't think it really minimized my pores. Like, I know you can't shrink pores permanently, but you can kind of make them look a little smaller for a little while. I don't think this did that, so would not purchase the full size of that. Here's some Dollar Shave Club razors. I keep repurchasing those. Here is the Atelier Cologne Cedret in any rot. I did like the scent of this. I hate these little dabbers though. They drive me crazy. Oh, oh, we got something. Ah, here is the Tory Birch perfume. I have no idea if they're cruelty free or not. I did like it. It's a very like traditional perfumey smell, but it did still smell good. So all right, let's get those sheet masks out of here. Whew. Let's see. Let go. Ah, we have the Bolero Soothing Cucumber and Aloe Paper Sheet Mask. This is from the Dollar Tree. So it was a dollar, but it was still really good. The sheet is a little on the thick side, but with cheaper sheet masks, that's just the case. So didn't mind that. Here is a lactose honey nourishing mask. This is definitely one of those like jelly sheet masks. It has like the really thick st kind of sticky serum on there. If you like that, this is a great one. Um, it does smell really good. I will give it that. I love the scent, the scent of honey, but it was just a little bit much for my skin. Here's the Lyra's Pick One Day One Mask Pack Watery Light. It was fine. A Coco Star Foot Therapy Paraben Free Foot Exfoliating Wrap. It's one of those foot peel things. Definitely looks like you're uh, slothing a layer of skin. Oh, here's the 111 Skin Rose Gold Brightening Facial Treatment Mask. This is another one of those like gel sheet masks. 111 Skin is this really expensive brand, and I have no idea why. Like, this is $27 a mask. Why? The thing is, this was actually really good. I did enjoy it. And with 111 Skin, the problem, and I only get them through boxes, but they pop up in boxes a lot. Like, this was for my BoxyCharm, and I have four more because they sent me the whole pack. Uh, either I can't figure out what they do for me at all, or they're admittedly a nice product, but I can't understand why they're so expensive. This is the latter. This was a really nice mask. Why is it $27? Now this was a really nice mask that I would pay for. It's a vitamin masks, multivitamin mask. You get like five of these for $40. It's admittedly a little on the expensive side, but if I wanted to treat myself, this was from a FabFitFun box. That's why I have a pack of them. This is a mask, sheet mask that I would buy if I wanted to treat myself. The 111 skin is just too expensive. Even it's like, I'm gonna treat myself mask. Not, not, no. Here is a BioRace Intense Hydrating Spirulina Mask. This was fine. Nothing extraordinary one way or the other. I bought that from Ipsy. And we have a Maskology Chill Mode Eye eye gels. They are soothing cannabis seed oil infusing eye gels. They were fine, but like I said earlier, I'm good, if I'm going to buy something, I'm going to buy the Wander Beauty ones. I think we're just down to sheet spoils. Here's the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Foundation. Meh. I think it's something that's just not made for my skin type. And here is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Foundation. To my surprise, the 10W yellow actually matched me really well. So that's about as much as I know about it. I did like it. It did have some good coverage, but I mean, I can't test it like how long it stays based on the card sample. Clinique Clinical Smart Moisturizer. Really wish Clinique was cruelty free because I love their stuff, but they're not. Nature Lab Tokyo Perfect Repair Shampoo and Conditioner. These were fine. Nothing spectacular, but fine. The 
what brand are you? Clarins Double Serum. This was kind of oily. The Josie Marin Argan Illuminator smelled like ass. I had to take my makeup back off because I tried, like I do with most illuminators, mixing this in with foundation and it just smelled awful. It may have went off because I've had that for a while. But uh, that smelled so bad I, don't, I still don't want to use it again. The Clarins Multi-Active Jouer Moisturizer. This was nice. Clarins isn't cruelty free though. The Tarte Quench Hydrating Primer. I really liked this. I have oily skin. Why do I like hydrating primers? What is wrong with me? Clinique Liquid Facial Soap and Wild. This is a very nice, very basic, mo not moisturizer, cleanser. Living Poof Restore Repair Mask. I used this after I bleached my hair, but before I dyed it. So definitely helped kind of repair that bleach damage a little bit. We have a, a, a Safe Tech Sunscreen Lotion. That was fine. And finally, let's end on a high note. A Smith & Colt Locked and Lit CBD Lip Balm. This was amazing. I'm, I have another sample of this, and I have so many damn lip balms, but I really want this. I really loved it. Like, it was, it smelled amazing and was really moisturizing. So, did I hit my goal of keeping towards 750 empties at the end of the year? Uh, you'll see the exacts of both August and September once we're done here, but I actually did. I am just barely on track, like exactly on track, but so far so good. As long as I keep up the momentum, I think I could still finish out the year with the 750 empties. And even if I miss the mark, I'm not going to miss it by much, which is still really, really good, especially considering this year. So that is it. Two months of empties. Nobody let me do that again. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I do really appreciate it, and hopefully I will see you later. Bye!